So everyone knows what WWW stands for. I, I don't know. But are we really using the internet as it is a World Wide Web? Are we being aware of where we are on the internet? Have you ever thought about what we see on the internet may be different from what people see on the internet outside of America? Despite the barriers such as the digital divide and political censorships that prevent us from reaching out, the most basic and vital barrier is actually language. I, 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 just, I don't know. Language is important in this case not only simply because we cannot understand what Greeks say about their economy, but also because the input language that we use online is already deciding and limiting what we get to see. It is so taken for granted that we normally don't even get to notice, but just imagine when you are Google something online that your Google outcome will be so different from someone who uses another language. Yes, English is dominant in the world both online and offline. In April 2013, almost 55% of the most visited websites use English as their content language, so English is almost there. But we, the English speakers, will still only get to see half of the whole story. The first problematic issue that I'm going to talk about is knowledge divide. Yes, knowledge is constrained by language. As the famous linguistic philosopher Rex Stein expresses, limits of my language mean the limits of my world. I want to mainly focus on Wikipedia, a website which has some of the contents available in 287 languages. However, the same content in two different languages can be profoundly different. For example, the Utah Medicine wiki page has a fair amount of information in English. When we switch the language to Korean or Italian, not only the language changes, the content also shrinks to one paragraph or so. They know what they did. <laughs> Even Wikipedia is not overcome this knowledge divide among different languages. How could other websites, furthermore, SNS such as Facebook and Twitter, are theoretically linking the world together? However, I don't think I read anything about Egypt's revolution back to 2011. These examples show how important language is online, where some might say that we can translate the website using Google Translator. This is the next issue that I'm going to see, and I call it missing translation. Before we head to the problems in machine translation online, let's firstly talk about those websites that are already available in multiple languages. A professor from the University of Maryland describes the importance of multilingual data in his research paper that multilingual metadata is closely related to social issues such as information access and international information flow across a wide range of fields including sociology, economics, journalism, and informational science. So we can see the importance of multilingual websites in the era of globalization. However, the existing multilingual websites have a lot of problems that they generally provide different content that targeting to different language speakers. For example, if you visit Tokyo Disneyland's websites in English, you will find the web is trying to present a Disneyland that with Japanese features. In the Japanese version of the websites, it tries to emphasize the Western part of it. In the one hand, it is very appreciable is because it reflects the potential of personalization and customer design of internet. However, on the other hand, it shows an inequality in getting same information for different language speakers. The problem that we are facing is the low quality of machine translation. For example, for this sentence, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Someone used a free online translator to translate this phrase from English to Russian, then back to English again. But what came out was, the vodka is great, but the steak is bloody off. So to sum up, I would like to look at the future of digital world. As globalization is taking place, a digital world is also changing profoundly in terms of the use of online languages. We have to be aware of where we are on the internet. Just being aware of the existence of these lingual bubbles is very crucial that while you are googling something online, you, are, you should know that there are far more results beyond what you see and also there are far more versions of stories that you are reading about. They are all out there.
on the internet the thing that we can do right now is that is actually very simple you can just simply write a post on your facebook or just tweet about what you think and what you got by watching this video and let more people to get know of these things that prevent us from accessing the real www internet the lingual bubbles but anyway at least that process has begun. And we were glad to be able to move forward ever so slowly, hoping that we might, as a country, have a respite from these types of injustices. And we did ha have a respite for maybe, oh, what time is it?